Hello, my name is Jamie, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Unlike other YouTube channels, this is a channel that only showcases Shadow Pokemon. So if you're into that type of content, I'd appreciate it if you could like, comment, and subscribe. So, before we get into today's video, I'd just like to say a huge Happy New Year to everyone. Thanks for all the support in my first six months on YouTube, and in 2022, we have some exciting news for the channel. I did say if I reached a thousand subscribers, I would buy a PC so the quality of the content will greatly improve. As to be honest, right now it's not great as I'm only using my phone. So with that in mind, we're only 12 short. So if you are new, please consider subscribing. And now let's get into the first video of 2022. And we have a treat for you. So if you've been on the channel a while, you'll know that I only use Shadow Pokemon in GBL and Master League Classic has always been a headache because there's such a limited amount of Shadow Mon that are viable. Not only that, it's almost impossible to get IVs that reach the right attack break points and bulk points. But today we are going to showcase my first ever 5-0 in the Master League Classic. It took four seasons, but we've managed to do it. And the team we're using is Shadow Gardevoir in the lead. Big fat boy, Shadow Snorlax on the safe switch. And we've got a Stone Edge Machamp as the closer. So getting into the first battle, we lead our Shadow Gardevoir into Togekiss. This isn't really the best matchup as our lack of bolt means we would lose. So I build up some energy and I bring in Snorlax. The opponent is staying in. I know this is probably just an Ancient Power or an Aerial Ace, but either way, I am going to shield it up and look to commit to the Lick Down. As Snorlax is really our only charm answer and I want to have as much energy as possible. We commit to the Farm Down and now we are loaded. They come in with a Kyogre. So I'm going to get this one Body Slam off. I know the Kyogre is going to commit to the fast move farm down. We actually draw a shield, which is fantastic. So now I'm gonna go for this back-to-back -back superpower. This first superpower does do just slightly more damage than a body slam. And the second superpower means that one more waterfall, that one that you see go through will KO us, therefore giving them less farm. Obviously we don't want them to farm us down too much as Gardevoir and Machamp are both super squishy. So we wanna take as very few charge moves as possible. So we're in a bit of a tricky spot. I'm going to bring in Machamp. I'm going to have to tank one move. This Surf's going to do huge damage because Machamp really isn't built for the Master League. You can see it does around 65% and now they switch out. So we've still got a shield for Gardevoir and this Cross Chop should put this Groudon into range where we can farm down. Our Gardevoir has hardly any HP. However, we are resisting Dragon's out and Groudon being a pure ground type doesn't get stabbed. So you love to see it. We're going to charm down completely. They've still got a shield, so there's no real point in throwing. We're just going to commit to their farm down. You can see they are super low, and our one-turn counter takes them out. You can see, once again, my editing skills are terrible, but one counter took them out before the waterfall registered, and we're off to a 1-0 start. Moving on into game two, we pick up a dreadful lead against a Metagross. That is something we absolutely do not want to see with Gardevoir, as Bullet Punch is going to, just going to shred us. We say switch into Snorlax, they... Switch late into a Gary. We already have got shield advantage. So at this stage now, I know that Shadow Machamp, unlike the regular Machamp, does beat Metagross even in even shielding. The regular does lose the one shield. Shadow Machamp wins the one shield. So if I can get a shield advantage here, we'll be in a great spot. The fact that they have switched out so late means that this body slam will put them in a range where the next body slam with the subsequent lick damage will KO. The opponent recognizes this, realizing they're not going to be able to farm us down and throw their energy. This is best case scenario. We can now come in with Gardevoir, take hardly any damage and get some energy together because end game, we're going to be looking to nuke that Metagross with the Shadow Ball. You can see these Dragon Breaths get absolutely nothing to us. We're still super healthy. I'm spamming out my champ. Show me a Steel type in the back. Show me double Steel. They've actually got Haxorus in the back. So this is pretty playable. You can see the counters are doing huge damage to our Shadow Machamp. We're doing equal damage to them. Let's see if the opponent shields. They have now shielded and this is going to be a good game. You're about to see Gardevoir, Metagross counter confirmed. I've got no intention of shielding off this Machamp. I'm going to bring in Gardevoir, charm it down completely. Charm is such a slow energy generation move. However, we're only a few charms away from the Shadow Ball. So just because you love to see a Fairy counter a Steel type, we are going to two shield flex and this Shadow Ball is going to be enough to take game two. GG's to the opponent, two shield flexing. So despite one of the worst leads Gardevoir could possibly see, I think it probably is the worst lead. I can't really think of anything worse, maybe a Caesar, but I don't think anyone's running that. 
But in the next game, we pick up a fairly neutral lead. I say neutral because the ghost type attacks from Giratina do hit us for super effective. The opponent switches out and I've got no intention of switching out because I've played the Gardevoir Giratina match numerous times. It isn't actually that great for us. So I'm just going to charm this Shadow Mammoth line down completely and I've got every intention of putting big, thick boy, best buddy Snorlax onto that Giratina. They come back in with Giratina, so I might have committed a shield in the Mammoth Swine matchup, but this is almost certainly going to get a shield back, which it does. So we're now in even shielding scenarios and Gardevoir has managed to delete one and a half Pokemon. And this Giratina is about to be very sad when you see the absolute wall that is Snorlax. The only thing they can hit us with is Dragon Pulse which doesn't even do that much, does around 40%. They go for a Shadow Ball, there's absolutely nothing. There's a Dialga, and I've got a good old friend for you, good buddy. Dialga, you might used to be the king of the meta, but Machamp is about to delete you. Cross Chop does draw the shield. The opponent is about to throw, and obviously I'm just gonna shield this up. I could now commit to the counter down and Stone Edge that Giratina in the back. The opponent, obviously realizes that and they leave the match. So that right there is 3-0. GG's to the opponent. Let's see if we can keep the momentum rolling into game number four. We pick up the lead that we're looking for. So we finally pick up the dream lead against Garchomp. They switch out into Mewtwo. Mewtwo's on the save switch, usually run Shadow Ball. You can see there in the right hand corner, I am spamming out Snorlax. Unfortunately, we're stuck in the charm animation, so I'm unsuccessful in catching the Shadow Ball. But if you, at first you don't succeed, try and try again. So there it is. We do have successfully catch on the second time, and this most definitely is the Shadow Ball. And even from Mewtwo, it does absolutely nothing. We lick down, so we've got energy together on Gardevoir and a super healthy Snorlax. They come back out with the Garchomp. These licks and body slams are really going to start adding up. The opponent isn't going to be able to fast move, farm us down, so they are going to have to throw energy. First body slam does a nice chunk, and if they don't throw, we are going to get to the second. We do get to the second, we lose CMP, they're going to have to go for an Outrage or Earth Power to take us out. There is the Outrage, so they are now energy dry. We are though down a shield, so can our Gardevoir and Machamp down a shield clean up whatever's in the back? In the back is a Melmetal, so once again we've got a great wall to them. So this is where you're going to see me make a huge call. The fact we've got a Gardevoir in the back means I absolutely know this opponent hasn't got the balls to throw the superpower. There's the bait. I'm not falling for that. At this stage now, even if you are going to bait me, I'm just going to shield this up and counter down. There is the superpower. And uh, once again, the opponent is going to be saving them shields for maybe season 11. GG's to the opponent. So this is why I often say in my videos, don't bait. You could have landed the superpower there and you might have had a chance with two shields. But either way, we take that. So moving on into the fifth battle. Can we get the 5-0? Once again, we pick up a lead against Giratina. And this is where you are going to see, like I said, it's not the best matchup. I was hoping they built up to the Shadow Ball and I would have tried to catch it on Snorlax. This is an ominous wind. It doesn't KO, but we're left with only a couple of HP. So I'm just going to switch out into Snorlax and I'm going to save that Gardevoir for a Sacrificial Swap. They switch out into Togekiss, so we're not really in the best spot, but hopefully drawing out the Charmer here means that Machamp will have some play in the back. I've got no idea at this stage how I'm going to get rid of that Giratina. Luckily for us, it is not that healthy, so Stone Edge probably will KO. So once again, I'm going to try and keep some health on Snorlax. You can see we've already got one shield from the Togekiss. This Body Slam unfortunately won't KO, but let's see if it puts him into a range where we can lick down. We get a little bit of lag. You can see I miss a lick, so we actually give him away two free turns. I think one extra lick might have KO'd. You can see they are super low. They actually survived, but this isn't great because I don't want to take the charm on Gardevoir. I want that as a shield, so I'm going to have to come in and counter down. We look to counter down. Unfortunately, one counter isn't enough, so we take a charm, which does huge damage. They bring in Giratina, so I am counting on the fifth. I look to try and catch on the Gardevoir, and they come in with a Dialga. This could be playable. The only win con for me at this stage is to land the cross shot, completely farm down, and Stone Edge that Giratina in the back. Can we do it? One HP and a dream, Stone Edge locked and loaded. This is why our Elite TM Machamp will Stone Edge KO from this range. You love to see it. Machamp surviving on one HP and a dream. The Legacy Stone Edge coming in clutch. And that is my first ever 
5-0 and in Master League Classic in four seasons of trying. So one HP in a dream got us there over the edge. We did take a screenshot to flex it as, trust me, 5-0 and in this sort of meta with shadows is almost impossible. So now we're getting into a few bonus battles, just a few fun battles that I had, not from any particular set, but you can see here that unlike Togekiss, Gardevoir can just one shield and completely farm down even best buddy Dialga. The opponent does fire off the Iron Head and now they come in with Zacian. Or Zacian, Zacian, Zacian. Either way, it's super annoying, but Snarls are neutral. They don't do too much damage. This thing is gonna have to throw. So you can see just the charm damage with deleted Dialga and Zacian, two of the most annoying Pokemon in the entire meta. They throw the close combat, so their defense has been lowered. We're now gonna bring in Snorlax. I know I'm gonna have to eat a close combat, but close combat, not getting stabbed, doesn't KO, despite us being shadow. It does do huge damage, but we do survive. They're at the second one. So I am gonna shield this one up and I'm gonna look to commit to the lick down. I imagine the opponent is gonna switch out, which they do. There's the Dialga, we counter that down. Let's see what the opponent comes back in with. That Zacian is super low, counter is resisted. However, as we know, Shadow Machamp really doesn't care about typing, so they bring back in the Zacian, expect us not to be able to farm down. Machamp doesn't care about you being no fairy, you get countered down. In the back is a Zaru, so this is one of the most absolute meta teams you could possibly see and the triple shadows are absolutely going to town. Zarud decides it doesn't want any more of that and we win the game. GG's to the opponent. So once again, we see the really tricky lead against Giratina. They again switch out into a Lugia. We get loads of lag, which isn't great. So now I've got absolutely no idea how much energy they're at. I know this is just gonna be a sky attack, but you can see that we've got them down to half health already. So I'm gonna tank this and look to get off this shadow ball. I actually decide to go for the bait because I think they're in a range now where Synchronoise will KO, which it does. So believe it or not, Shadow Gardevoir beats Shadow Lugia in the zero shield. Something I wasn't entirely sure about. So we don't even use a shield and we get the alignment we want. Snorlax Giratina is by far the funniest match you're ever gonna see in the Master League because it's such an oppressive mon. It's such a meta defining pick and it does absolutely nothing to Snorlax. They switch out into a Mewtwo. So as smug as I was just then, we're in such a tricky spot as Machamp has zero play. So I'm gonna have to commit both shields here and try and get rid of this Mewtwo. I think the opponent will recognize this and they are probably gonna double shield Mewtwo. The opponent actually tanks the first body slam. So we CMP tie here to limit the chance of them getting a free Psycho Cut in. I'm gonna have to shield this up once again. I'm gonna get this body slam off and we're gonna look to sack. Shadow Machamp, you've been an absolute monster in this video, but you're gonna be useless here. So the only use I can find for it at this stage is the sacrificial swap. So this is gonna be a side strike from you two. I think it'll probably delete about 26 Shadow Machamp. So that's the end of that. Back in comes Snorlax. We're still not out of the woods because this Giratina does have a shield and the health advantage. Can Snorlax clutch out this game? You can see Shadow Ball doesn't do too much damage. We are gonna go for double resisted body slam, which also is gonna do pretty much nothing. They're forced to shield as they're gonna have to shield something. You can see these licks are really adding up. Snorlax now though is getting quite low. We are double resisting all the ghost type moves and it's quite apparent that they don't have Dragon Pulse. So once again, Snorlax in the red is gonna have to tank a Shadow Ball. Shadow Lax tanks it like an absolute boss. Look at him there, standing there flexing. He don't care about no Shadow Ball. And the Body Slam registers. We lick down, Mewtwo's got no health in the back and Shadow Snorlax goes on an absolute rampage and we take that game. Moving on into the next one. Once again, we see Giratina. This time it's shiny. Not only is the Giratina shiny, they switch out into a shiny Lugia. So it could be Triple Shadow versus Triple Shiny. You can see that this match isn't too bad for the Gardevoir, especially when the opponent lets us sneak in a charm. So I am going to shield this Sky Attack up. I know it isn't going to be the Aero Blast, but we have got so much energy. I'm going to go for this Shadow Ball. So if the opponent chooses to shield, they actually don't. So we are super healthy and we maintain the alignment. Once again, the key is when you see Giratina lead, all you want to do is get your Shadow Lax onto that Giratina. 
So I'm just staying with Gardevoir because I just need that lax on the Giratina. My champ has no play. All I'm going to do here is just do as much counter damage as possible. I have got a shield. I am going to shield this up because we don't need any shields to deal with that Giratina. There is the Giratina. Hi. Here's Mr. Snorlax. Let's see if the opponent top left. They're going to need Dragon Pulse. Do they have the Dragon Pulse? This is the Shadow Ball. It does nothing. The opponent is staying in, but you're going to see that I think this game is absolutely over. I think the only play for them now is to get a couple of boosts, but that's not going to happen. They go for another Shadow Ball. You can see that the lick damage is far outweighing the speed of the Shadow Balls. And as the opponent isn't top left in, I am just going to start spamming out some Body Slams. The opponent does shield it up. They are now super low. I imagine the swap is coming at any stage, but the fact that we've only been just using fast moves, there's the Kyogre. We've got two body slams locked and loaded. This should draw the last shield, which it does. We've got another body slam, so this body slam should be enough to take out the Kyogre, which it is. Back out comes Giratina, and finally the opponent top left. Valiant effort, but I think your only win con there, buddy, was that we lag out. And luckily for us, unlike most games in GBL this season, we didn't lag out. So we see yet another Giratina lead. This opponent switches into Zacian. Normally, they like to go for the play rough first, which they do. They're now unable to make play rough on the second attempt. So I'm counting Snarls. They're at four. This is going to be a close combat. So despite us being super squishy, I'm not shielding that up. You can see close combat does hardly anything. We maintain switch and we're loaded full of energy. Let's see what the opponent comes back in with. They are waiting out their switch timer because obviously they have switch locked themselves. They bring in a toga kiss. So once again, this is absolutely dreadful. So we find yet another match where Shadow Machamp has zero play. I really don't think we're going to be able to win this matchup, but we shall see. So the Togekiss is building up a lot of energy. I am going to fire off this Body Slam just before the opponent gets to a move. The opponent lets it go through. I've got absolutely no idea why you'd possibly let that go through. They obviously don't know we've got Machamp in the back, but either way, you really don't want this Snorlax on Giratina because what is that going to do for you? The opponent realises it made a huge mistake there. We take misplays and we win that match. Moving on into the next battle. We pick up a matchup against Zarud. Once again, they bring in Mewtwo. So because I've got two great answers for Zarud, I'm not even going to try and get fancy and catch the move. I'm just going to bring in Snorlax. So Snorlax doesn't have a great matchup against Zarud. I'm just going to try and really pressure this Mewtwo shield. And ideally, I want shields down because Machamp then is going to outpace it with Cross Chop. The opponent doesn't actually shield their Mewtwo, which does surprise me. This is just a side strike, it's not a focus blast, so we can tank that no problem, and we're going to be able to lick down. Despite us not having a great matchup against Zarud, we can hit him for super effective with the superpower. So the fact that they're using Vine Whip as a fast move, they're not really offering that much fast move pressure, so I'm going to go for a body slam first to ensure that they're going to be unable to fast move Farmus down. It looks like they are desperately trying. So I'm going to get to this superpower. It's going to do big damage. And if the opponent doesn't throw, which they don't, I'm going to come in and snipe with Gardevoir. So that Zarud goes down with around 100 energy. In the back is a Melmetal. So once again, this isn't great. I am going to have to save my shield for my champ. Rockside doesn't do too much damage. The opponent is looking to build up a lot of energy we are going straight for the shadow ball there's no point baiting with a synchronoise in case the opponent decides that they want to call the bait they are looking to farm us down which obviously isn't fantastic but even resisted shadow guard ball absolutely doesn't care about steel types whatsoever so it's now deep deep in the yellow so we're going to bring in my champ and once again i am going to be looking to call the bait it is the bait they're now just to get to the back-to-back -back superpower for no reason whatsoever, I'm going to bring in Snorlax to soak up the first one, which we do successfully, and now one counter will take him out. So they can save that shield once again for Season 11. So GG's to all my opponents. This team was super fun, and I'm really surprised how well it worked. I think I went 15 and 10, so this is by far the most successful Master League team in Triple Shadow form I have used. So... 
Over the next coming days, we're going to see some other battles which haven't been so successful. I'm going to be showcasing Shadow Mewtwo and also Shadow Swampert. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you want to see that sort of content. I'd just like to say thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.